a seafood mezzi of mollusks, crustaceans and snails. They are adorable little birds and great fun to watch, especially when they're running from the sea. I could watch them for hours, but it's time to head inland to the little town of Para to meet Rahul Alveras, local wildlife expert, book writer and herpetologist. A posh name for snake catcher. There is tons of wildlife and that's why I like being here. And there's something special about Goa. I mean, everybody all over India wants to come and visit Goa. And uh, it, it may be a combination of many things. I believe it's a combination of the beauty, the architecture, the, the Portuguese architecture, and uh, you could say the, um, the Western life, you know, the fast life. I mean, nowhere else can you possibly expect to be swimming uh, in, in the sea, um, uh, you know, in your, in your bikini or your swimming trunks and then go out to a nature reserve really close by, you know, maybe an hour's drive. So it's, it's all in one area, it's a tiny area, and it's, it's a combination of all these that produces that charm. Rahul takes snakes seriously and spends his spare time visiting schools and hotels to educate people and tries to alleviate the fear that these slithery creatures provoke in almost all humans. Can't see why myself. Ugh, I take that back. These are called Whitaker boas. They're named after a famous uh, snake handler in India, the, uh, the American guy called uh, Romulus Whitaker. He came to Goa and he discovered this, this uh, new species. And they're quite uh, easy to handle, docile snakes. I picked this up on somebody's, uh, in somebody's house. This is a snake which people actually are quite frightened of in India because they believe it has two heads. The tail of the snake looks very similar to the head. So I believe it's a defense mechanism for the, when the snake is escaping into a burrow, the tail would remain behind and distract predators. These are snakes I use when I'm doing a presentation at a school because uh, they're very easy to handle, you know, they're, they're perfect icebreakers, especially with children and people who are scared of snakes. So if you're going to handle a snake, all you have to do is, is remember to support it. It likes to be supported. It doesn't like to be held like this. So just support it and the snake will sit on your hand. It's not going to move away. These feed on mice and geckos. Uh, they generally go for warm-blooded animals. They prefer those to, they, they don't eat frogs. They don't eat certain other animals. They will even take a small bird if they can. Now this is a snake which is almost blind. See, its eyes are tiny. So you know, I can do this. It won't respond. So it relies almost completely on its sense of smell, uh, especially using its tongue. So that's how it tells what's in front of it whether you're prey, predator, you know, so unless you smell like a rat, you have nothing to worry. Now this snake is fine. As for our next friend, well, don't try this at home. This is the Russell's Wiper, which is one of India's four venomous snakes. We've got about 275 species in India, but only four really dangerous ones. And uh, this would be one of the most aggressive, fast striking, and apparently kills around 10,000 people in, all over the world every year. One of the best ways to identify a different shade from a python, because this one's confused with the python all the time. It's got lovely diamond, very symmetrical diamond markings all over its body. But even a snake as vicious as this, as you can see, is choosing escape over trying to actually attack me. When it's not cornered, he sees a chance to escape, so he wants to try and escape. You see the strike? The, the movements are really quick. So this is a snake you can never pick up from the ground. If you, if you try to pick up directly, you know, by grabbing its tail, lifting it off the ground, the snake will turn in seconds. So what I do with a snake like this is to tire it out. Uh, if you notice the movements initially when he was trying to escape, he was quite fast. And now he's slowly kind of tiring out. So once you tire him out, you have a better chance of, you know, being able to hold the tail and then bag it and put it in your bag. So Rahul catches them, bags them, and lets them go back into the wild. With any luck, this is one Russell's viper who'll keep his distance from humans and won't attempt to enter any more of their households. He is tired, but the ordeal was worth it. He's now just a few feet and a slow slither to freedom, away from that nasty man with the black bag and hook-like thingy. Talk about cheating. <laughs>